That is something the Lord showed me to speak and share with my people. And I believe if you connect well, you will be blessed. I didn't hear you. Lord, I humble myself. Your name be exalted. Have your way. Bless your children. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, I want to preach on a topic I titled, Men Without Vision. Hi. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Look, look, I'm, look, I'm, look, I'm in the eye. Say neighbor. Men without vision. Women without vision. At this time, I'm referring men in the world of general, uh, generally, okay? So, men without vision. If you have a walk, be careful how you walk with man without a walk. Let me repeat it again. If you have a walk, be careful how you walk with men without what? Walk. They can make you lose your work and they have nothing to lose. Somebody said they have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose. You know, the Bible said it already where there is no vision. The people does what? Now, let me show you something. When God has given you a work, be careful on the kind of man you work with. Now, look at this. When you refer work, let me use this as an example. This is the work the Lord has given to you. And it's your business. Now, at the process of you having this work, work in W-O-R-K, then you have people, come here, homie, then you have people that you are very close to that you walk with. The next walk there is W-A-L-K. Now this walk is W-O-R-K, walk. And this one now is walk. Now, you have a walk as a man and eventually you have people that you walk with but those ones you walk with have no vision. But you who already has a walk has what? A vision. Now, I want to teach something mysterious this morning and I want you to get connected and understand the mystery so that you can in your life begin to understand why a lot of men fail. There are so many of us the Lord has blessed with works. The Lord has blessed with a good handwork, good businesses and all that. But a lot of problem that has happened to them is the kind of people that surrounds them. Let me tell you, the worst thing that can happen to a man is that the people who are your friends and your best friends are men without a vision. I repeat again. When you are a man, you have a walk, you have a vision, you have an anticipation, you have something you believe in, you have a plan, you have things you're about to execute. Be careful of the kind of people that comes close to you. Those that come close to you matters and have a contribution to do in terms of the works that you have. And that is why there is a warning. That those kind of people, if they are men without a vision, they will be there as friends, but you will not understand that they don't love you. In fact, what is even, who, who can define a friend for me? Here? Who can define what friendship is all about? Who can tell me? You know what friendship is all about? Nobody knows? Okay, let me hear you. A friend is someone who you share your secret with. A friend is someone who you share a secret with. That definition is not complete. You can share your secret with even someone who is not your friend. Who 
can tell me what, what is what is friend? I mean relationship. You can tell me what a friend is. In, but it's very easy in your mouth now. Let me hear you. Praise God. Hallelujah. A friend is a friend who will help you in times of need. A friend is a friend who helps you in terms of need. Yes, a friend is a helper. That's a good one. Let, let me hear a deeper definition. Yes. People should be very fast. Friend is someone who you are emotionally attached to. A friend? Someone you are emotionally attached to. No. When you talk about emotionally, emotionally is feelings. That could even be sin. <laughs> Let me hear. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. man. A friend is a person that you trust and share your secrets with. You trust. And you are close to the person. Yeah, you trust. That's a good one. You trust. Okay. Okay. Friendship is when some, when two people stick together during difficult times or good times. Okay, yeah, you can know through friends during difficult times. That's okay. So let me hear him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, man. I think a friend is someone who you will trust. Mm -hmm. you, you share your secret with and we do everything to make sure he keeps your secret and makes them safe. Without discussing with others after sharing your secret with them. Okay. So you're saying a friend is someone that can die for you, is that what you mean? Hmm? Okay. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. In in Igbo uh palace, I say yes. which means a friend is somebody who actually believes in the same vision with you. With you. Somebody who sees things the way you see it. Somebody who acts the way you will act. That's actually your friend. Somebody who sees the same vision. Somebody who shares the same vision. Okay, let me take one or two people so we go into teaching place. Okay, one woman then. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, man. A friend is the closest person to you. Closest person to you. Yes, like a companion. Okay, let me put this question. Anybody you call your friend, is that person your friend and you are his friend? Hmm? Let me rephrase the question. I call him my friend. Uh, Bro Mike is my friend. Uh, does it mean as Bro Mike is my friend, I am equally Bro Mike's friend? Oh. What did you say? It's, it's my friend. Hmm? Sir? Sir? Huh? Good friend. <laughs> Now, let me, let me clarify this before I go to the, the teaching of the day. This man, now, friendship is somebody, you can share secret with your friend, but that's not the major option. But a friend is somebody you can sacrifice for. Somebody you can stand for, stand by, stand with, and die for. That is what relationship is all about. Okay? But I can be a friend to this man. And there is every possibility this man is not my friend. Now look at this. I can come to this man. Anytime he has a problem, I contribute. I have only 10,000 in my house. He come crying. I share it for 5,000. He tells me he has this problem. I share. Eh? Then, when I have a problem, he contributes little. And do I don't care? I'm only his friend. He is not my friend. Now, friendship is by choice. So, I accepted him as my friend, but he didn't what? Now, let me tell you. If 
everybody that walk with you, when God has given you a vision, might not be your friend. You are holding them because you are his friend. And if you look very well, that person you are holding might not have a vision. When he helps you and trouble your vision, he has nothing to lose. And that is why if you want to walk on the walks, the blessings and the gift the Lord has given to you, do not be too kind. Being too kind has destroyed a lot of great men. Because it's not every hungry dog you see on the street is hungry. If it's not every hungry dog in the street is looking for a strength to bless you. There are hungry dogs who will feel the bone, they will get a strength and they will bite you very well. When you walk with men without vision, you are in a mess, so you are in a mess. That is why when you say he is my friend, look well, brother. Before he crumbles everything about you. There are people who are your friend because of your kindness to them. I repeat this again. There are people who are your friends because of what? Your kindness to them. There are people who do not have vision at all and what they do is to find a place they will perish. I tell people, let me tell you, success. When I was having a meeting with the media yesterday in my house, I took time to advise them and as I was advising them, I tell them, see, what makes a man with success is when a man has a vision and walk with it, walk with the plan he has. And I meant them to understand that, you know, they say prayer is the key. That's correct. But when you come to church, as you are praying, you say, God, I need the miracle. You begin to shout. After praying, you go back to your house and keep your leg like this. And say, God, I'm waiting for my car. God punish the devil. No car will come. I go a book car out there. Then as we were talking, I, I asked them, I said, all of us are the same. I said to them, how long have you guys been in Lagos? They told me, some said they were born. I told them, I don't think I've been above 12 years in Lagos. I was born in Lagos and as a baby when I was born, I went back to the village. So I'm not a Lagosian. I'm a son of Abia. Now, I return when I grew up and I've been in Lagos two years. And I came to Lagos with Ghana. Let's go. Then I told them again, I said, remove prophets. That's the title in my name. Because what I want to explain now, you people will say, because you are a prophet. Is that correct? I said, because you people will say what? Because you are what? It's not all about being a prophet. Because you can equally be a prophet without a plan. You can never succeed. I began to share my testimony. I began to count the few properties I bought. I began to count my physical prosperity, my spiritual prosperity. I've told them even in the village, I've built up, I've begun to make analysis. I said, and there are people who have equally stayed in Lagos for 20 years. They have not even been able to leave one room. To go to another room. I don't know if I'm saying something. What I'm saying doesn't make sense. Now, I said, when I'm saying it, I keep saying, remove prophet, because all of you will be saying, hey, you'll be prophet. Anyway, you'll be prophet. There are people who can even prophesy still, even to pay one room today is what? The problem. Sometimes some people pray and they do not have vision. Any man without a vision is much like a failure in existence. If you're a man and there is no vision, you can never do what? You can't go, you can't go far. Those who walk around you, take me to Genesis chapter 4. 
Let me show you something. Genesis chapter 4. Verse 1 to 10. The story of Cain and Abel. Genesis 4. Yes, 1 to 10. Verse 1 to 10. Yes, sir. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Aha, uh-huh. Adam and Eve bear who? Cain. Cain. And she again bare his brother Abel. He bare his brother who? Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Uh-huh. And in the process of time, it came to pass uh-huh. that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. Now hear this. I want you to take that place again. He said, Cain brought a gift to who? Unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And what happened to that gift? And Cain brought of the fruit of the ground uh-huh. an offering unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock uh-huh. and of the fat thereof. Now hear this. Cain brought a gift to God and his junior brother Abel brought a gift to God but Abel's gift was what? Fat. Somebody say fat. Now vision. Now look at this. The two of them did the same thing in the same altar. They brought it before the presence of God but Abel has a vision that the only way to capture the heart of God was to give him something what? Fat. If you look at the story of Joseph if you know one of the mysteries why Joseph captured the heart of his father was because he made him what? Eh? God of many... No, no, you read Bible. Amen, church. Amen, church. Now, when Abel brought his and Cain brought his, what happened? And the Lord had respect unto Abel's... Hear this. When Abel brought his that was fat, the Bible said God had what? Respect, respect. unto Abel. Somebody say respect. God had respect for what Abel does what, did what? Brought. Yes. And his offering, uh-huh. but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. But on the one Cain brought, God did not have what? Now look at this. What was the mystery here? The mystery was that Abel have the vision knowing that for me to achieve this I have to do this a lot of us don't have vision there are people here now that if I give you 500,000 if I give three people for 500,000 you'll be shocked that out of that three one person might come back to show you what he achieved Abel saw ahead of Cain I can capture God's heart and I can receive this. And this is the way I will do it. That is plan and focus and vision ahead of time. There's two of my boys in the east. Anytime I'm in the east, they follow me. One drives me. One follows me as my old daily. Something happened. There was a day I was leaving. They, supposed to, they, they, they were to drop me at the airport. As we were going... I gave the other one because the other one is my brother, far brother. I gave him 20,000. Then I gave the other boy 20,000. Then, you know, we now, I went to the airport and I started coming back to Lagos. Last December, I went home. I saw two big, uh, this, uh, chick, a fowl, this, this English one, what do you call it? <laughs> this is a Greek. Uh, two big one. They were like, I said, my mama, ha, this one, this Christmas, this one go reach eight eight thousand one or ten ten thousand one. My mama smiled. He said, Ah, it's your boy that brought it. I said, Which boy? He mentioned the name of that boy. <laughs> so when he came, I asked him, ah, because I know he's, you know, trying to survive. I said, ah, Why will you go and spend such money to? Buy this too big uh, something. You know, I'm not too comfortable. He smiled. He said, I bought it with the 20,000 you gave to me. I said, no, 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 no. I won't. He said, no, you, won't. you don't understand. It's not what I mean. He said, what I mean is that you gave me 20,000. And I went and started a business with 20,000. I said, hey, 
20,000. Ah, 20,000. I said, yes. I said, what did you do with 20,000? He said, he started doing a, a growing a fowl, whatever. He went and bought a knack something and started with that. He would tell me successfully that he has saved close to 60 to 80,000 gain. That he has about how many he told me that he is about to sell. And now that he brought from these two to say thank you. And I called the other one who happens to be my brother. That 20,000 I gave to him. He said, 20, he said that thing finished the next day. Family problem at home. Hi. <laughs> it's not funny. That boy taught me a lesson. You know, eh, there's one thing in life. When you're teaching, you're learning. Eh? Pastor, when you're teaching, when you're teaching, you're doing what? Any teacher who teaches is learning. That's one thing about life. That boy taught me a bigger lesson. I was just looking at him. Now, he is one of the mega business boys in that community, in that area. 20,000. So the last one we were coming back, I gave both of them about 130,000 to go and share. Now, after three days, he called me. He said, you know, go call your brother. You don't carry that money. Carry woman, come out. Now, look at this. The other one is my far brother. He is just my schoolmate. The other one that is making his achievement. He's just my schoolmate. Amen. And he don't live in the village. He lives in Abba. But, you know, Abba house is not because maybe you can get one room and all that. You and your family... But what is shocking me, what is shocking me is that the boy has what? A vision and is looking for a ladder to climb. So any little platform you give him is pulling that boy to climb. Let me tell you, I was discussing with somebody and I told him, any day I wake up now and give that boy one or two million, give that boy three years, you'll be shocked. He will bring a car for, my, for me to bless. A lot of us here do not have what? A lot of us do not have what? There are even some people that I can give uh, 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 one, one million now. And you will be shocked within a month. They will tell you, ah, the way Nigeria is, what is even one million? And there are people you give one million within six months, they will, came back, they will come back and tell you, daddy, we bought two buses. Ah, from that money, how come? And I have discovered that one of the things that can make a man to succeed is when a man has what? Vision. It's not all about doing six to six. No matter how much six to six. No, there's one thing I saw on social media. They said somebody was doing dry fast than one student. You know social media, I don't know if it is true. Huh? I don't know, you know, since it's social media, I know the believer, anything, any lie, anybody can stay in his bedroom with 100 naira that can post anything. But one day, and say, the family, my brother, God answers prayer. But I have discovered that when God created a man, there is so many things he put in a man that you do no longer need prayer to solve it. Hello? Any day you see me do fasting, that means that case is too, is too tough. So in terms of prosperity and success, brother, brother, you must have what? You must have what? Do you know there are people here now? Now, if I just got this out and I said, God told me to give five people to 250,000. There are people that will go home with that 250,000 by next Sunday. Shame. If, if they know the shame, they will still come back to you. Isn't it a laughing matter? And tell you, Daddy, the way it is now, eh? My landlord wants to slap me. Then the 250 say, Ah, you know, there was some debt. You know, there was some. Let me tell you. There is nobody on earth that does not owe. No matter how rich, even federal government is. I didn't say you should go and start owing people. 
Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. But you must have to understand there was a boy here. I think, Sister Angazi, you know this uh, boy, Sunday. Sunday. Bus driver. Sunday, when Sunday met me in Kilo Branch, he doesn't know what to do. Sunday, what do you do? He said, I'm a conductor. What is the problem? He said, I have problem, house problem, this one, this one. I said, how much do you make? He said, ah, you know, conductor, now we can make 4,000, 3,000, we eat food. And I said, your problem is because you do not have what? A vision. Sunday, which account do you have? He said, account to bank. He laughed. I think he's from a boy or somewhere. A boy said. I said, what? what? He said, account. I don't have account. I said, Sunday. Can I mentor you to be a big man? He laughed. He said, yes. I said, I want you to continue to be a conductor. Don't resign. He said, I said, yes. Now, Sunday, tell me how much you make every day when you go to work. He said, okay. Now, he took my number, took his. We started talking. When Sunday goes to, uh, you know, do, to do conductor work, he makes some money. Sometimes you say he makes 6000 he makes 3000 he makes 4000 5000 Then I will tell him, Sunday, he said, yes, sir. I said, divide that money into, keep one part aside. The remaining part, manage it. See it as the only money you have. Let us give ourselves a target of one or two years. We continue, we continue. Once in a while, he will come to NIVG. Once in a while, you won't see him. He will come to, he comes to more of counseling. You know those kind of things. I keep petting him because he's not this kind of person that goes to church. But he believes his problem was overwhelming, that it could not be solved. He said, I know God is using you. I said, this one is not prayer. You have an opportunity to succeed. The problem is you have lack of vision. Sunday started saving. A time came, he called me and said, Daddy, that money I'm saving has risen. You know, he don't pass 300,000. I said, Sunday, continue. He now told me how much he has saved. I said, Sunday, say, I said, go and buy a bus. He said, I said, go and buy a Tukumba bus. He didn't buy, I think the one he bought that time, I think is second, that's second hand. He went and bought. He brought it. There was a program, with, I think, two years or three years convention here. That bus they were using to convert both the Suya people, cheer and all that. It's his boss. You know, he didn't charge money, he was doing that. Now look at this testimony. That boy bought what? A bus. When he came and I blessed it and I told him, he told me, I said, now, son, he said, yes. I said, you have bought a bus? He said, yes, sir. I said, who will you be? And I said, a driver. I said, a lie. Sunday, you are still a conductor. He said, eh? I said, shut up, my friend. You are still what? He continued as a conductor. From that conductor, Sunday bought another. Now, as a conductor, as shouting, my two Oshodi, my two Oshodi. Some people will say, oh, Oshodi, oh, Lord, get that from there. The person telling you to get that do not have a tire. You're talking to somebody that has two bosses. A man with vision and a man without a vision. The problem is, when you tell somebody, most especially our fellow youths, when you tell them, give yourself a target of two years or three years, he will say three, three, wait, three. And you will say within an end, I think on the eye, that three years is what? With the speed, it will look like there is a mission. Let me tell you. Any business you're doing, if you want to succeed, I don't need to pray to tell you what you will do for you to do what? It's all, it's all here. I know how I can rebrand somebody that sells clothes on the street and you become a mega businessman saying something here. Everybody that fails, in fact, the problem in Africa now is that all the failures is now attributed to the village uncle. Hello? All the failures now. And they don't remember that as we are growing, we are becoming a poly village. Am I saying something here? Very soon, they will say that one of my uncle, that one, the pastor, I don't even know which kind of prophet. He's only him that is prospering. That man, wicked. I don't do anything. I don't do anything. Have a vision. And then bring prayer 
as a backup of a fence, just like we fence this property, as this property is fenced. Make your pray, prayer a fencing wall, but you, you should become a carrier of what? Vision. And the worst thing that can happen to you is that you, who carries the vision, now have somebody who always walk around, who always come to your house, that has no and anytime this because of how kindness you are to them they always come close every hungry dog in the street be careful how kindness you can become because some of them need strength so they can do what bite you bite you and when you're coming out, you say, he's my friend, though. We were too close. He comes to my house. He eats my fruit. My brother, from the onset, he was not your friend. You were just his friend. Lift up your hands. God punish Satan. Every unfriendly friend that shall destroy your vision, I separate the both of you from today. I didn't hear you. Every unfriendly friend, every destiny destroyer who is near you today because of your kindness, I separate the both of you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are people that you lose, you don't need to go after them. When you lose them, you rejoice. It is better you are far away from a destroyer than you are close. Some people will say, I am holy. I'm a child of God. Well, let me walk with it. Let me forgive him. Let me bring him back. My brother, in one you're killing yourself. There are people you don't pray for them to return in your life. Can I pray for you? Any man without vision in your life, from my altar as a prophet, I hereby separate the boat of you. When you look at the story that we read from the Bible lesson of the week about Joseph, Joseph had a dream and had a vision. Who are the people who never believed in his vision? His brothers, is that correct? And they are the one who did everything to destroy the works of who? Joseph. But you know the way of God is not the way of man. God still allowed him to overcome and he became what God has assigned him to become. Can I prophesy to a believer? Whatsoever the Lord said you will be, even your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your village people, your business partner, your church members can never stop in the name of Jesus. No community power can stop you. No foundational altar can stop you. No altar from any kind of dark world can stop you. I hear my prophesy. Receive a vision in the name of Jesus. 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 If you do not have a vision before, I restore a crown. Jewel 2, 25, 6 said that God will restore what the canker worms has eaten. Whatsoever the enemy has tampered in your destiny, I restore them back to you. That in this September, you will have a vision. By December, that vision will begin to bear fruit. It is done and settled for those who believe. Thus says the Lord. I bless you today and may that blessing be permanent. And I pray for you as a child of God that you shall receive a mysterious miracle that no power shall stop in your life and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me and hear me well. Do not walk with a man without a vision. Put your hands together for our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are blessed, say amen. If you are blessed, say amen.